How's it going? I'm Michael Steiner, Roughneck Craftsman. And uh, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to make a badass cutting board. So, uh, just building out some scraps in my shop. We got uh, some, uh, some Poduke and some Peruvian Walnut we're going to make this bad boy out of. So, uh, got some, uh, some good lengths here. And, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get them ripped down and put them on the joiner and then uh, press these suckers together. Tell you. Now that we ran the, these boards to the joiner really quick to get them nice and flush, we're gonna rip them down to the width we want. So uh, we'll turn on the old table saw here, get these suckers cut down. Man, that Poduke smells good. Nice and sweet. Mmm. All right, they're all ripped down the length. Let's uh, get these uh, some clamps out and get these suckers glued together. Just turn them all up like so. Because these are, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> foreign species of wood, uh, I like to use uh, Type Bond 3, and that's not a plug. If they want to throw me some money, be my guest. But uh, it's uh, polyurethane based, and it usually bonds the uh, exotic woods together better. So just get a bead of glue on one edge. Nice and thick. You really can't put too much. I mean, you can, but that's on you. Don't put it on the last piece. There's no point. And just take your finger. If you're some high flutin son of a gun, you can use a glue spreader, but I guess I'm just not that kind of a guy. So just, uh, you know, whatever finger you choose to use. Pointer finger, ring finger, middle finger, whatever makes you happy at the end of the day. Get your finger off of the corner of your workbench, get the excess glue off. There we go. Now just turn each piece in, like so. So you've got a nice, you know, yeah, they're flat, but you guys get the point. We'll just cinch up all your clamps and then I kind of even up the end here. It doesn't need to be square, we're going to square that up later, but get it kind of even. Just like so. Make sure they're all nice and awesome. And just tighten them all up. You don't want to do it too tight. You'll start pushing them up sometimes, or sometimes the pressure will collapse and they'll just explode on you. I've had that happen before. A long time ago. You know, I don't want to make a mistake like that now. Oh, yeah. Alright, I'm going to let this sucker uh, set up overnight since it's evening. You usually need to really clamp for you know at least an hour, I would say. Some people would say a half hour. More is better, what can I say? All right, we'll get back at it in the morning. All right, good morning, here we go. Uh, let this set up overnight, and now we're just gonna take the clamps off and uh, get this son of a gun uh, sanded down. So, just loosen all your clamps, pull your piece out, and she's gonna be uh, pretty indestructible. The glue is actually stronger than the wood, so they say, so this thing's not breaking apart. But uh, we'll go ahead and bust out the belt sander, sander down, and go from there. All right, so put a couple spring clamps on either side of it to keep it from moving when I use my belt sander. And uh, I don't need this on anymore. 
So, uh, spring clamps hold in place. It's the whole thing, the whole piece can shoot off with the belt sander given the right circumstances. So, uh, got that down. I'm gonna start with some, uh, I think this is like 50 grit. These, these woods are extremely hard and uh, I gotta get them knocked down and get this whole surface nice and even. Uh, the key with the belt sander is just uh, keep working. Don't leave it in one spot. You're gonna get some serious, you know, unevenness in your piece. So here we go. Just got finished uh, smoothing out our, uh, our piece with the 100 grit on the belt sander. And that sawdust, look at that. Look at that awesome color from the Poduke and the Proving Walnut. Also colors everything in orange. Because, uh, yeah, it's orange. Just uh, stepped up to the 100 grit sandpaper on my belt sander, and that'll be the last grit I use on this. But uh, the more steps of sanding you do, the flatter this will get and the smoother it will get. So make sure you do both sides with all your steps. So now I'm going to go from my belt sander to my random orbit sander with a, uh, I think I got 120 grit on there, maybe 150. How you step your grits isn't super important. Just uh, make sure you go from less to more and uh, get that sucker real nice and smooth. Since this is a fairly small piece, um, I'm just going to use a table saw guide here. Just square up for one, at least one side. Just take a framing square. The grooves in your table saw are perfectly squared or should be perfectly squared to your blade. So I'm just going to make sure that's square. And it is. I'm going to raise the blade. Put the one edge I want to square up. Pull it tight to the fence. I'm just going to take off uh, the smallest amount that I need to just have enough surface to work with later. Now we've got a nice 90 degrees here to here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw the pattern I want and it can be whatever the hell you want it to be. It doesn't really matter. If you have a creative idea, go for it. Me, I'm going to do kind of square. I'm going to round over this and do like a handle with a hole in it on the other end. Alright, I got my pattern all drawn up and I'm going to use my bandsaw to just cut out my pattern. Uh, you could use a jigsaw if you don't have one, but I do, so I'm going to use it. Uh, so here we go. Alright, now I've got my basic pattern all cut out, and I'm going to grab my oscillating spindle sander. Clean all this up. All right, now I want to punch a hole in the middle of that circle deal I created on the handle there. So I just put a Forstner bit inside of my uh, drill press, mark the center, and I'm going to go for it. Awesome. 
Okay, so got my whole pattern cut out now. So uh, we put a router round over edge on both sides of the board. Uh, just kind of smooth it out, give it a little extra detail. I'll also route out the uh, center hole I put in there. And after that, I'm going to hit it with the random orbit sander one more time to get rid of some of the bar marks from some of the tools. And then we'll hit it with the palm sander and smooth her out. And we're almost done. Alright, routed both sides, the quarter inch round over bit, including the circle. So has a nice clean, professional finished look. And uh, we're going to sand this sucker out and then put some oil on it and we're going to be done. Alright, so we're going to random orbit it one more time. Alright, now I'm going to palm sand it with some 220 get this sucker real smooth. So, here we go. And I'm not going to use my palm sander on the edges. Uh, you can't keep it very steady and I'll just use some hand paper on that. Get those all rounded and smooth. 220 again. Hold half a sheet in half. Give this son of a gun the business. Alright, so first I'm just using a well, what was a clean rag before I started rubbing on that piece? Uh, clean uh, rag just to get the dust off of it. I'm just going to go with the grain, give her kind of a good polish on all edges. Get rid of any uh, residual sawdust. Clean her up really nice. Alright, so um, we're going to use uh, mineral oil. On here to protect it and seal it. You don't want to use a polyurethane or a lacquer because as you cut and use this for food that can mix in with it and some of those things are toxic and that would be probably a terrible flavor in your mouth. So I'm going to use some of this quad out steel wool. I'm just going to kind of, oh never mind you got to open up the freaking bottle before you use it apparently. So open the bottle of your fresh, uh, freshly purchased mineral oil and wax. I'm just going to freaking squirt some of this crap on here. This stuff will spread pretty well. So steel wool, and I'm just going to kind of you know, work it into the wood. I want to make sure you're really coating it so you can't use uh, too much again, so to speak, but I really want to get a lot worked into the wood. And you're going to rub off the excess when you're done, so really get it worked in there. It's really going to bring out the color of these uh, exotic woods, too, which will make this thing look freaking awesome. Alright, well, one project is finished. Super basic, easy. Kind of fun thing to do, and you know, add a little more creative detail to your freaking cutting board. You know, put a hole in it. Why not? So uh, yeah, just remember uh, something else I didn't mention before is the glue I used uh, to glue the boards together is also uh, water resistant, which could be very important with the cutting board because you are going to get some water on this, and uh, that just helps keep uh, the joints stronger, and then this whole thing will last longer. But the final product is pretty cool. I mean, the natural luster and look of this wood together, I think, is pretty sweet. Might not go with every kitchen, but sure as hell is going to go with mine. So I guess that's it. I'm making videos now. What do you know? All right, maybe I'll see you guys all again. Who knows? Maybe I'll get like five views. Maybe I'll get zero. Who gives a shit? Here we go.